What the hell? What the hell is going on here? Makes me wonder if I broke something there. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. Hi there, and welcome to another video on my five video series of oscilloscopes in a price range from 50 to 100 heroes, something like 52 to 104 uh, dollars. Today I will review the SIGPIC DSO 1511G. I'm quite excited about this one after reading the specs. I know that in the last review of the Kiki Moon uh, DSO 120M, I mentioned that the following videos will also be in Kiki Moon oscilloscopes. I did buy this as a Kiki Moon, but found out later that the manufacturer is SIGPIC. No website, no information online, a shady YouTube channel, but they do seem to have created a nice product. Spoiler alert, next video will also be from SIGPIC, but with the two channels oscilloscope version that is packed with a lot of functions. These oscilloscopes were bought with the revenue I got from the affiliate programs. Only possible due to the viewers who were thoughtful and used the channel affiliate links when shopping on AliExpress, Amazon or Banggood. I would like to thank them again from the heart for their continuous support. <laughs> if you like my reviews and want to help also, just use one of the affiliate access links on the screen when buying on Aliexpress, Amazon or Banggood. The price will be exactly the same, but you will help to maintain the channel and continue to produce these review videos. Back to the SIGPIC DSO 1511G is a 120 MHz bandwidth oscilloscope with a sampling rate of 500 mega samples per second. That for itself is already a red flag for the maximum bandwidth of the device, but I don't want to speculate. Moving on to the features highlights and let's start the review. So, as usual, let's see what comes in the bag. It comes in this semi-rigid uh, bag. When you open the bag, you have, star for starters, uh, this is a stand that you can uh, stick in the back, and you have also these two pins. I will show you for what. A charging cable, and this charge with the USB Type-C. That's pretty neat. We have also, uh, and this is the first I see this. This is a, a output to connect to a TV. So this oscilloscope can output for uh, the image for a TV. And yeah, that's awesome. You have the normal P6100. Uh, yeah, the P6100 probe. It doesn't have all the whistles like the extra rings or the calibration, the compensation key, but yeah, it comes with a, a probe, a user manual. Uh, yeah, it seems fairly okay. Not the best, but, but it has an index. That's good. Also, infographics. Yeah, seems organized at least some time here spent. Yeah, seems okay. So you have a user manual and finally you have the oscilloscope in this plastic bag. So the first impressions, it is very small and I mean small. It's very compact. It has this 
uh, very thin uh, protective uh, rubber cover. It prevents slipping. It prevents slipping, but it's not a uh, very good quality. It will become with wrinkles, as you can see. One positive thing is that if you want to connect uh, a terminator like this, you can just move the cover to the side and you will be able to attach this properly. You'll have a function, it's not a function generator, it's a PDLM, PWM output here and also a 5 uh, volts USB Type-C in the bottom. And you can connect this to the computer and I will show you how. You have also the AV output, that is a curious thing to see in an oscilloscope. And finally, as you can see, the keyboard is very compact. It has uh, less keys than the other models that I reviewed before. Some of these keys have double functions. We have a guide for that. And I'm quite curious to see how this works. So let's start. So let's start by see how this works. First of all, I'm going to connect here my Owen XDG 2100 function generator. Let me just zoom in. To power it up, you don't have a mechanical button. It is a soft button like this. Press for a while. It doesn't take much to, to start working. And in this oscilloscope, you have a steeper learning curve because you have uh, less keys here. You have only the basic keys, but every function requires two keys to, to make it work. So, you, for example, you have the change the time division in, in these two, okay? And you have the amplitude in these two. Everything else, it has to be combined, uh, other than the run and stop, that it's only one kit also, and while running, you have the auto. So, yeah. Let's start by explaining how this works. In normal mode, you can see the trace in memory like this, and you can change the offset like this. As I told you, every key can be combined with the X key. And let me show what I mean. For example, if you press the X key or power and menu, you can change AC coupling or DC coupling. Uh, Other option is, for example, if you press the X key and millivolt option, you can change for the, the attenuation for the probe in 10 times, 100 times or one time. If you press X key and voltage, you activate all measures or remove all measures. You have also one cool feature and I will show you in a bit, but I can show you how to activate it right now. You press X key and nanoseconds and you will have the horizontal cursors on the screen and you press it again to take it off and X key and S, and you have the uh, vertical cursors. And yes, that's true. This little guy have uh, cursors for me measurements. That's huge. It's the first os the small oscilloscope I see in the range to from 50 to 100 uh, dollar, uh, euros uh, that has cursors. And not only, I will show you a few more features in, in a bit. And also, for example, if you want to move the, the trigger, you just press X key and up and down and you are able to move the trigger. Another uh, combination that you can do is X key and run to change to manual and auto. And also you can change the rising or falling edge by pressing X key and OK. OK? Pretty simple. You just have to remember this while using. The only uh, combination that I didn't found any use is X key right and left. OK? So right and left, I already show you. Uh, you can change the, the position of the tracing memory. 
and up and down change the offset and it's basically almost everything shown you have also the, the power key without any combination for the 50% okay you have the single and this is the, the the sad part of this oscilloscope the single function is used like this so yeah you can use it but it's on the menu it's not like uh, like this that where you can change to auto manual the trigger yeah it's a pity and let's see you have also the reference well the reference it's a, a, a needs uh, function the fnirsi 1c15 also have it and i forgot to to mention in that review sorry for that and the way it works is it creates a, a reference line that you can compare with the other line as you can see you have on the back a line and you can do for example uh, auto and if the signal is different from the one on the reference it will you can see it on the monitor on the screen and compare it with the previous one let me see if i can take this out maybe press ref again yeah just press ref again and it will go away you have the normal save waveform okay save done and oops no not yet and you can have come here and see the saved waveforms yeah i just have one but let's select this okay and you can go again to the menu and let's see how we can uh, menu okay so in terms of uh, functions and buttons it's basically what we have you probably notice that you have those combination of keys on the feature section if you pass that section you can go there to see the combinations of all keys in terms of screen you have here the auto you have the edge indicator the battery indicator also you have some measures here on the screen always on the screen and you can always put all the measures on the screen like this in here on the yellow box you have the amplitudes the dc indication or ac the probe indication also and in the blue one you have the uh, time division right now it's 500 nanoseconds and in terms of screen that's it so let's now see what we have on the menu the menu works pretty similar to other mod models up and down change the menu uh, tab like this and you select with the right and left keys and for selection you use the ok in terms of uh, for example as you can see the ac dc is changing in here as you select it okay pretty nice you can select like this also as i explained let's see what options we have on the other menus this is the measure menu you have a lot of uh, options to select the frequency peak to peak the mean or average and periods well in here everything is mixed up you have the time uh, measurements and the voltage measurements all together the t cycle period max base uh, and you have also the option for all that's the same that the like this as you can see one cool thing is when you press the keys you will update the menu with the options that you just use one example is ac dc this was kind of a bug I, I found on FNIRSI. I don't know if it's the 1C15 or the 5012H. But yeah, it's not so bad. But this one, it's working perfectly. So we have here the trigger. We have trigger normal or auto, trigger type rise or fall, and also the trigger level auto and manual. You can select that with the keys as I've shown you before, like this, for example. As you can see it's changing the option it's the trigger level and the next menu it's the persist it has persists also one second or infinite you have also to activate or not the roll mode and you can select the oops the brightness 
also in here. Let me say. Uh, okay. You change it like this. You have to put in the plus and minus signals. Okay. I think this is good enough. Yeah, that's okay. And finally, let's go to the set, the last one. You have the auto shutdown option, the sound. You can take the sound off. Let me take the sound off. Whoops, sorry. Okay, sound off. And English and Chinese, it's the normal on these small oscilloscopes. And this is something awesome that this oscilloscope also has. It's the FFT function. That's right, you heard, okay? This has a FFT in it. Okay, so now I'm gonna use one of these cables to show you something really awesome. What I've done is connecting this cable to a music output, in this case in my computer uh, banana plug uh, output, and I will start playing some song. Let me just put here okay it's outputting some song i have this in 500 millivolts and 5 nanoseconds let's activate here the fft okay so we have the fft over there that's a, a huge uh, thing for this small uh, oscilloscope you have this on logarithmic right now let's try with linear Okay, so linear is in here, in the bottom, but this one is the one I want to show you. And you have a spectrum analyzer in terms of sound. This is so cool, man. This little device gives you this kind of uh, feature in, uh, in this price and yeah. Okay, something that I, that I want to talk about it also, it's the cursors. To, to activate the cursors, just press the X key or the power and for vertical you press the S and you can draw the line over here. Oh, sorry. So if you are pressing the X key and the direction keys, you will move the right side okay and let me eat and without pressing any key you move the left side okay so that's it and you have also cursors for the horizontal line and using the same method you can change oops, the position of the horizontal cursors yeah this is really amazing such a small device it has almost all the functions that you that a, a big oscilloscope has and the frequency it supports it's about 95 megahertz so a pretty high bandwidth for this kind of oscilloscopes even if it's not a 120 megahertz oscilloscope pretty nice solution okay so i think that i show you almost everything let me take this out of the screen okay so we have here a different angle to show you one of the things that i was most most excited to show you uh, i already <laughs> go and found out the uh, old tv that i had it has here a small problem but nothing of that really matters so let's start by powering the oscilloscope as you can see, it's connected to the TV, but we don't have the signal on yet. To, to activate the signal, you just go here to menu and go all the way to the last uh, menu. It's called set. And uh, I think before it's, it was the auto key, but right now you just press the run stop key for a while. And here you have it. You have the signal on your screen. And this is amazing. For me, at least, uh, that I have some... Let me just take the menu out of the way. For me, at least, that have some 
issues with <laughs> high sight and small things, this is awesome. Uh, for a small oscilloscope like this to have this feature, it's amazing, really. Uh, quite uh, unexpected. And this is a, a, a box of uh, surprises for me. Well, this will only mirror the screen. The, the screen is 320 by 240 pixels of dimension. So in a screen like this, it will be a little squarey. But anyway, you can totally see what you are doing. Uh, you can see every signal without any problem. This is amazing. I'm really surprised with this. And it works pretty well. I don't know why the manufacturer didn't put an option on the menu to activate the AV or keep it activated, as simple as that. But anyway, just press here the run stop for a while. Okay, oops, but that was not what I, what I was expecting. Like, ah, okay, we have to take it to the last menu. Press run stop for a while and we deactivated the AV and press it again and here it is outputting to the TV how awesome is this man <laughs> okay let's move on and let's do now some testing in bandwidth and to see how it handles right now what I have here uh, let me take the modulation off do auto so the signal that you see on the screen right now, it's one megahertz, one volt VPP. Uh, let's start by, by using a, a lower signal like 100 kappa hertz and see how it handles. So this is the maximum that you can have in terms of frequency or time divisions is five nanoseconds. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, it seems a very stable sine wave. Let's start increasing this. Going back again to one megahertz, one volt VPP. This is my, my function generator is configured for IZ output and this is also a one mega ohm input. So Let's see what we have here. So in terms of voltage peak to peak for one megahertz, we have 940, 50. It's pretty good. It identifies quite well the, the frequency. Okay, moving this to 10 megahertz. Don't forget they say this is a 120 megahertz oscilloscope. The signal stays very stable small g3 but nothing nothing really special totally accept acceptable and yeah it seems to to be working pretty well still very near of the one volt let's move this to 25 megahertz okay in 25 megahertz i have here one volt pretty cool yeah I reach the limit at 5 nanoseconds, 1 volt, it's a little bit, uh, well, it's not so well formed the sine wave, but it doesn't have a lot of jittery and yeah, I can live with, it, with this. Let's move on, 50 megahertz, okay, in 50 megahertz we have here something that starts to be let me do an auto it's this is probably about no it's not good i have here a lot of well uh, signals overlapped hmm. still have a voltage over one volt peak to peak the oscillos the function generator is outputting one volt peak to peak so in range but what is going on here? Okay, let's try to pass to 75 megahertz to see what happens. Well, it's it stays with this 
strange sine wave. I don't know what's why this. Even on the lowest uh, oscilloscopes, I don't have this kind of sine wave. It's with all these overlaps. Let, let me check if I have the persists connect, uh, turned on. No, I don't. I don't know. Okay. But we have a small drop in voltage. That's normal. We are reaching the 100 megahertz. That is the maximum of my function generator. I cannot take this to the 120, but if it works okay, it's one. 100 megahertz, I will be happy. And to be honest, I'm not happy with this. Not at all. What the hell? What the hell is going on here? Okay, so maybe some things happened in my function generator i rebooted my function generator and the signal seems to be okay so you are out of the hook for now it seems that the problem was on my function generator so with 50 megahertz you will have a peak to peak of 630 30ish uh, millivolts it's under seven, 700 millivolts, and that's something that it's not desirable. Let's try to take this to 75 megahertz. Let me do an auto. Uh, weirdly enough, in 75 megahertz, uh, okay, it's now in 600 millivolts, so the drop is consistent. You have a nice waveform. Even so, this is 5 nanoseconds time division. And let me take this to 100 megahertz. It's the maximum I can have here. And I have this again with a weird signal. It doesn't detect the frequency. Let me take this to 75 megahertz again. Okay, 75 megahertz it detects, but let me put at 90 megahertz. It detects the, the 90 megahertz. So let me just increase this manually. I'm going to do auto. And I'm going to take the frequency up manually up to the 100 megahertz. It seems to be handling quite well until the 95 megahertz, as you can see. 96, 97, at 98 it starts to, to go nuts, and 99, go berserk. It, it stops detecting the signal. I don't know why. Okay, so in terms of bandwidth, even so, I must say that I'm quite surprised with the, the bandwidth this supports. Yeah, 94, 95 megahertz, 95, yeah, 95 megahertz, you still have 700 millivolts peak to peak with the uh, output from the function generator of one volt peak to peak. So I will tell you that this function genera generator is almost 100 megahertz. Uh, it supports almost 100 megahertz bandwidth. Well, in this test I made, if I increase this a little, it, it goes totally berserk. Look, 1998, right now, 99. Right now my uh, function generator is outputting 99 megahertz and 100. The 100 might be a problem with the, the interface because it might <laughs> might not have the well the the space to put the 100 there. Let me activate all the measurements. Maybe in here. No, it's the measurement. It's always in here. It doesn't have on the top. It's a pity. 
Yeah, but I think the problem, the zero, it's not zero, it's 100 and it's not showing you because it doesn't have the space to show the 100. Yeah, that must be it. Even so, the drop, it's, it's dramatic. Uh, it should be over 700 millivolts and it's not even close. Anyway, if you take this to 95 megahertz, you will have 95... Yeah, 95. This is 95. You will have 700 millivolts. So this small unit, it's the one until the moment that supports more bandwidth. Of course, this is measured using the, vo the voltage drop until the minus 3 dB. And yeah, I'm sure there is other ways to, to measure, but this is one I can do it right now. Okay, so now let's test some other waveform types. Let's start with a square wave. Yeah, the square wave, it's always more tricky. It will not always be perfect. And I can see here for one megahertz, it already has some deformation in, in the top. And yeah, let me see something like 100 kilohertz, how it will be. Strangely enough, it will have some deformation. Let me take this and see if the probe is properly calibrated. Meanwhile, I will show you also how it works the PWM. Let me just take the pins out of this small bag. One pin out, two pins out. Okay. We have these to, to stick on the back and yeah, it will give you a, a stand or you can grab it in the end. So we put those two pins. I don't know if it's like this or like this, but yeah, let's go like this. Okay, you put the two pins in and I need the rest of my probe. I think I put this in the wrong position, but anyhow, anyhow, and let's connect this in here. Yeah, this kind of probe, it's more difficult, but I think we are good. So let me talk something also awesome on this small device, and for the price this is a, a winner. This small device also has a function generator. So let me show you how this works. For example, we can have in here hertz, couple hertz or megahertz. Yes, it has a function generator able to go to the megahertz. And you have the sine wave, the square wave, uh, I think triangle. This is the saw wave. Yeah and several others. Noise. So let's start this and to start just press the, this one. Okay. Yeah, this should be noise, I believe. Yeah. And to change the selected uh, waveform, just press in here. Okay. And you, you'll have a lot of forms to test. Let me see if I can yeah, draw this. You have in the, the signal generator waveform being generated. Okay, so we have here the triangle. Let me just change this. To change the waveform, you just press V or MV and you are able to change it. This can generate, for example, let's go to the sine wave. As you can see, the, the, the probe is correctly um, compensated. Let me take this, okay. Yeah, we have here some 45, uh, 90 degree angles, very well defined. Yeah. Auto again, let's decrease the time to 
frame. And yeah, let's see what else do we have. We have sine waves, noise, and we no with noise, let me just activate here the FFT again. Lower, logarithmic, okay. Yeah, and you can see it working pretty well over there. Okay, just a curiosity. Take it out. And what else we have? Sine wave, so, uh, yeah. Pretty awesome. For the value of this device, this is amazing. Amazing, really. You can on and off again, take out of the screen, and that's it. So now I'm gonna test with my millivolt voltage reference board the voltage sensibility and accuracy of this oscilloscope. Now is the time to talk about this video sponsor, PCBWay. I always use PCBWay for creating my boards with a professional factory quality, as you saw in my millivolt voltage reference board. It is very cheap to manufacture your PCBs on PCBWay. You can manufacture 10 PCBs for only 5 bucks. How awesome is this? And it is pretty easy also. Just insert here the PCB dimensions and you'll have an instant code. So when you want a PCB, visit PCBWay to get your code. And if it is your first time ordering from PCBWay, you can use our access link for a $5 credit. And don't forget, they also have component assembly service, a 3D printing service and much more. Uh, in the manual, let me show you, it says the voltage sensitivity, it's 10 millivolts per division to 20, 10 volts per division. So let's see if we can detect the 10 millivolts here on the board. Let's start with that one. So in here, let me do auto just to be sure that it's set to the correct parameters. In mean, it's this one. We have uh, 14 millivolts, 11, it oscillates a, a bit, but yeah, I think we can consider it's, it has some oscillation, but yeah, it, it goes there. Oh, yeah. So let's see in 25 millivolts what we have. 25 millivolts, it detects 26, 27, more or less. Okay, near, 50 millivolts, 50 millivolts, it detects 52 millivolts, and it's more stable than the first one, uh, 100 millivolts, hmm, let me see if I have this, welcome. Ah, okay, let's do it, auto, yeah, 100 millivolts, it's almost uh, on, on the spot, yeah, 101, pretty near. Let me try again this one and do an auto here. Yeah, this is the one that fails the most, but it's there. 9, 14, it, it jumps a little, but yeah, it's there, still there. Okay, 215 millivolts. Ah, we have to do an auto again to set the range. 253, 255, this one is a bit off because the output of this uh, pin is 248 millivolts, but yeah, okay. 500 millivolts, also near, a bit over, but the RMS, it's almost in the 500. Let's move on to one volt. I have to do auto again. 980 is exactly the output of that pin. 980 to 85, yeah, that's on the spot. Two and a, two and a half volts. Let's see what we have here. Uh, okay, another auto. 248. Yeah, that's exactly the output voltage of that. 
and this one it, it always has strange values so I don't mind it's just to check it out it should be something like three to four volts yeah four and then half it should be five but I don't know this one is never working correctly I have to check on version two of the board so I think that I can consider this a success it uh, except uh, 10 millivolts it was a bit off and a little jumpy but all the rest uh, seems to be very near to the output values just missing the tear down Let's start by this end, right here, in near the battery connector. I think you should have something like the TP4059 or something like that, battery manager, over this, um, over this it dissipation paste. And yeah, that's it. Over here, you have a Puya P25 key 32SH. This is a ultra low power 32 megabit serial flash memory. Flash memory. As you can see, uh, we have several ICs that were scrapped. So uh, this one seems to be the ADC and this one seems to be another processor, but I cannot say which is which. This seems like a AD9288 or MC, MXT2000 and something, I don't remember now. And yeah, this one, this is, a, this is a amazing processor to be in a, on an oscilloscope. So these guys put on an oscilloscope a 700 and 20p HD multimedia processor. So this processor is able to decode H.264 video and also MPEG 1, 2 and 4 uh, also uh, 30 frames per second video. And it is also able to encode MPEG at 30, uh, 30 frames per second and JPEG also. So <laughs> this is amazing. You can basically see movies on this oscilloscope if they program it for that. It has audio codec integrated and yeah, it has a lot of multimedia functions. I don't know, this is a very weird processor to have on an oscilloscope, but maybe it's here because of the output AV or the AV output that we have in there. And what else? As I told you, I have, I think this is also a processor, but I don't know which one. I also think this is uh, the ADC. And we have also in here an analog device that is a, a one gigahertz low distortion amplifier. This is also an amplifier. We have also, this is the relay. It's very typical on this kind of oscilloscope. This, is, this should be the multiplexer, the multiplexer or something like like that, or eight line to three line. What else? I don't know really, uh, because it's scrapped. And in here, I think we have an optocoupler or photocoupler. It's the 172 GM, probably from Toshiba. And that's it. We don't have a lot of ICs, big ICs, but the ones we have, half of them, are scratched. That's a pity. And maybe to slow down the competition because this oscilloscope it's quite nice to be uh, honest about it. It's very nice. And yeah that's it. We have here the version 9.5b of the motherboard. And yeah the rest it's trivial stuff.
it sound right boy okay so what i'm going sh to show you now is how to upgrade the firmware first just press power and millivolt button you will see this uh, blue screen it's hard to see the letters i'm trying to show you but yeah it's hard to see the letters and basically what they say is to connect uh, the usb cable it will appear a new drive on the computer and after that you just copy the firmware to the to that drive and press ok after and you it will update the firmware i'm not gonna do it i'm just showing you how it can be done and yeah it's an easy step you just connect like uh, the file like to a usb drive or something like that and after you uh, copy the file with the extension .bin. You just press OK, and it will update the firmware. Heads up, because today it will be a long conclusion. I have lots to talk about, but bear with me. In these five video series, on the end, while wrapping everything up, I've been saying that the oscilloscope that I'm analyzing today is better than the previous one, and to be honest, that kind of worries me because it looks like that I'm always saying that I like everything. Well, the problem here is that, and I swear it wasn't on purpose, I just choose to leave the two channels oscilloscope to the end and choose to start with the FNIXI and do on the second part the Kiki Moon oscilloscopes. But man, in every review the bar was raised. I haven't seen reviews of these equipments before I do my own, to avoid being biased in the review, so I didn't know what will come of each review. And all this to say what? Well, this SIGPIC DSO-1511G oscilloscope sold as Kiki Moon, it was a huge surprise. Not all is wonderful, it has some serious cons, and I will start by those. First, you have absolutely no support on this oscilloscope. SIGPIC has almost no presence on the internet. You have a YouTube shady channel called Oscope. And if you read the comments on that channel, you can understand that it's from the creators of SIGPIC. And also find a link to the shared repository of files where you can, uh, sorry, where you can download the latest firmware. But that's about it. Nothing else exists. The second problem I see is that it does have a rubber cover, but it has a very low quality and already uh, and arrive already damaged. Third, another issue is the key philosophy and the overall user interface. It's a bit harder to learn all the combinations to do everything that this device allow you to do. So it's not so easy to start working with it as it is with some of the competitors. Fourth, uh, fourth, and the last. And this is a common problem to the majority of the manufacturers of equi equipment in this price range. The announced bandwidth seems to be higher than the one I got in my tests. Now that the dirt is out, let me tell you, for 60 euros, 62 dollars or near 52 pounds, this oscilloscope is a winner. Let's look at the pros. First, even if it's not a 120 MHz oscilloscope, but it seems to handle the signal pretty well up to 95 MHz, a record in this kind of oscilloscopes and on the reviews I've done. Second, you have a function generator built in with several waveforms available. Third, you have a FFT function with logarithmic, linear and music signal display functions. And in the music, you even have a bar spectrum analyzer. Fourth, you have cursors. Cursors! <laughs> this is the first oscilloscope in this price range. Just a reminder, it's 50 to 100 euros that has cursors. And they work pretty well also. Fifth, you have an AV output to connect to a TV or a monitor. So, awesome! Sixth, you have all these in the smallest oscilloscope in that price range that I had here. But they still managed to keep the 2.4 F50 display equal to the competition. The only thing that 
is holding this oscilloscope of being a no-brainer is the in-existence support. But if you are okay with that, there's not much that I can say. Grab the money and go buy one. You can always use the channel affiliate links and help out, just saying. In a more serious note, yes, this is a package full of surprises. It's well thought and SIGPIC managed to create a very complete oscill oscilloscope in a very compact form factor. I have to confess I am so curious to see the two-channel version. In the AliExpress page, announced that it has also the XY mode, among other things. Can't wait to get my hands on it. If you are considering to buy one of the SIGPIC DSO1511G, please don't forget to use the affiliate link in the description or any of the access links here on the screen or also in this description to help me with the channel. And if this video was useful to you, don't forget to slap that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that bell to activate all notifications and be the first one to be notified whenever I upload a new video. That's it for today. I hope that you enjoy watching this video. I have a blast making it. I hope to see you in my next video. Until then, stay safe. Cheers.